Hey everybody, Alan Wheeler here filling in for Akeem, and on today's fix of entertainment news, DC has revealed the next big screen Superman and Lois Lane, Idris Elba opens up about what put him off the idea of playing James Bond, Marvel's Secret Invasion is going relatively unnoticed by viewers, and Phoebe Waller-Bridge teases her plans for the next Tomb Raider series. Let's get into it. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's an official casting announcement for the next Superman movie. DC has officially announced that David Corenswet will portray the Man of Steel in James Gunn's upcoming movie reboot, Superman Legacy. And stop the presses, the lowest lane to Corenswet's Clark Kent will be none other than Rachel Brosnahan. Corenswet recently appeared in Pearl and We Own This City, and Brosnahan is best known from House of Cards and her starring role in The Marvelous Miss Maisel, which is fantastic, marvelous, if you will. Gunn, who in addition to writing and directing the upcoming film, is also the co-architect of the entire DC Cinematic Universe that's kicking off, confirmed the news on Twitter. Though we'll undoubtedly get some teasers, trailers, posters, and probably a bunch of leaked set photos before then, we can expect to see these two on the big screen July 11th, 2025. What's your take on this? Do you have strong feelings either way, or will you wait and give them the benefit of the doubt? Let us know in the comments. Friendly reminder that everyone thought that Heath Ledger would make a terrible Joker when he was first announced. Just throwing that out there. Never know. In other casting news, sort of, Idris Elba is not going to play James Bond. That shouldn't come as a surprise. However, the actor recently opened up in an interview about how the racist backlash to the possibility of him filling the role made the entire thought of it off-putting. Speaking to the Smartless podcast, he explained, essentially, it was a huge compliment that every corner of the world, except from some corners which we will not talk about, were really happy about the idea that I could be considered. Elba added, those that weren't happy about the idea made the whole thing disgusting and off-putting because it became about race. It became about nonsense and I got the brunt of it. Given the British actor's performances in shows like The Wire and Luther, not to mention his all-around charisma, it's not hard to imagine him playing the debonair spy. However, it ultimately seems like it was one of those pie-in-the-sky fan castings more than a real rumor, you know, like Danny DeVito voicing Detective Pikachu or John Krasinski playing Mr. Fantastic, you know, for more than just one scene. Whether Elba was ever in official consideration to play 007 remains unclear, but the series producer Barbara Broccoli, great last name, previously stated that it's time for a non-white James Bond. Unfortunately, a statement like that even needing to be made in the first place is partially what rubbed Elba the wrong way. Speaking to Esquire, he explained, as humans, we are obsessed with race, and that obsession can really hinder people's aspirations, hinder people's growth. Racism should be a topic for discussion, sure. Racism is very real, but from my perspective, it's only as powerful as you allow it to be. Signing on to star in a franchise like James Bond is a significant investment for an actor's time, unless you're George Lazenby, I guess. And sadly, no matter how good a performance Elba were to give, much of the conversation around them would be about the color of his skin. So you can't blame the guy for focusing his efforts on roles that don't have as much baggage, like Luther, or say, Knuckles the Echidna. You can ironically chalk Idris Elba not being considered for the part of James Bond to an entirely different type of discrimination. The Bond producers are supposedly looking for someone younger to play the part in the next 007 movie, which of course opens up another whole can of worms about ageism in Hollywood that we're not gonna get into. Okay, we've talked about superhero stuff, spy stuff, now what about superhero spy stuff? Secret Invasion premiered last week and viewership numbers suggest it might have been a little too secret. It's the second worst performing Marvel Disney Plus show to date in the US. According to Samba TV, 994,000 households watched the premiere in the first five days after it aired, which is a lot better than Miss Marvel, which was watched by 775K and barely trailing behind Marvel's What If, which netted a million in the same time period. For comparison, Loki holds the top spot, pulling 2.5 million households for its first episode. It's unclear what factors led to Secret Invasion's lackluster launch. There's a very real possibility of MCU fatigue, or maybe a show about Nick Fury without any Avengers around just didn't have enough widespread appeal. IGN's reviewer gave the first two episodes a 7 out of 10, which seems to be on par with other outlets. Let us know in the comments if you're watching Secret Invasion and if people are missing out. Switching streamers real quick, we heard back in January that Phoebe Waller-Bridge would be penning and executive producing a Tomb Raider series for Amazon, and the Indiana Jones 5 star recently shed some light on the project. 
Speaking to Vanity Fair, Waller Bridge explained, there's room to do something really quite dangerous. And if I can do something dangerous and exciting with Tomb Raider, I already have an audience of people who love Lara and hopefully will continue to. And that's a very unusual position to be in. It's the old Trojan horse. For anyone concerned that this part of the recent trend of writers hijacking adaptations to tell their own stories with complete disregard for the original source material, well, that's still a possibility, but at the very least, Waller Bridge seems to have some reverence for Lara Croft's backstory. According to the interview, she replayed the games during COVID and found her love for the character unwavering and acted on her big, roaring instincts when Amazon approached her for the show. She alluded vaguely to what she has in mind. What if I could take the reins on an action franchise with everything I've learned with a character I adore and also just bring back some of that 90s vibe? What that actually means is open to interpretation. Will Lara be backflipping over dinosaurs while dual wielding some chrome-plated USPs? Will she lock her butler in a walk-in freezer? We'll have to wait and see. And it might be a while as the project is still in early development, but we'll definitely keep you posted. And that's your Fix of Entertainment for Wednesday, June 28th. For more, check out our interview with the producers and star of My Adventures with Superman on how it borrows from Dragon Ball Z. And for everything else entertainment, make sure you're following and subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch.